In today's Community Focus, we are taking a closer look at the relationship between New England and Great Britain. That's right, the UK's new representative in our region, the Consul General David Clay, made his first visit to Rhode Island this week. And while he was in Providence, he sat down one-on-one -on -one with 12 News Politics Thank editor you, Ted Nisi. So you are the 43rd British Consul General to New England. Um, I think most Americans know the UK and all countries have an ambassador, but they won't necessarily understand the distinction between the ambassador who's representing the country, one country to the whole country versus someone who has a regional posting like you. So can you just sort of explain how you fit into the diplomatic puzzle? So you're right, we've had a, we've had a consul uh, in, uh, in New England since 1790, and it's just a few years after the, um, the revolution. And essentially my job is to promote UK interests in New England, so the six, uh, six New England uh, states. Um, um, what that means in, in practice is, uh, at the moment, a real focus on, uh, on trade and investment, um, but we also do a lot of work on science and innovation. Uh, we also look after British nationals who, uh, who get in trouble uh, uh, in New England uh, as well. When you drill down to Rhode Island specifically, what ties between the two countries, what opportunities, what things are top of mind for you? Yeah, so I think clean energy is definitely um, uh, top, of my, top of my mind here, and especially uh, offshore wind. We have some great UK companies already um, operating here in uh, here in Rhode Island, I'd like to see a lot more of uh, a lot more of that. Um, we had some delegations uh, from Rhode Island visiting the UK. I met one of them in um, I think April uh, this year, who'd come to look at UK ports and what um, you know, Provport can learn from uh, some of the ports we have in the UK that are dealing with uh, with offshore wind. Um, so that's a big big priority for us here in Rhode Island. I think the other area where I think you know there's a real opportunity for us to do more is around ocean tech and some of the new sort of tech um, advances that are happening in uh, um, here in Rhode Island. What would be your advice to leaders in Rhode Island who who want who say who hear you and say yes please how do we get more <laughs> UK companies investing in Rhode Island how do we get on the radar screen all that I really think there's no no substitute for that face-to-face -face, um, inter interaction um, so I think you know making sure we're getting um, delegations from the UK over to, to Rhode Island getting delegations from Rhode Island to um, to the UK to talk to each other to build those personal relationships which I think are really at the heart of um, how we sort of drive forward cooperation between our countries. So I think if I had to pick one thing, it would be that, that human connection. You're going to be here for four years, which means you'll be here for the 250th anniversary of that disagreement between yeah. the two nations in 1776. How do you see that? Where do you see the role of you as a representative of the British nation here in this region that began the revolution when we get up to, to the sesquicentennial? Yeah, I think, you know, a bit living here in knowing New England, there's no escape from the, the history um, of, uh, of you know, the relationship between our two, uh, two countries. And it's a really kind of long and rich history. As you say, there have been lots of, uh, lots of disagreements um, along the way um, as well. But, um, you know, at the, I, think, I think there's a real opportunity to tell a, a really powerful story uh, about how there were obviously, you know, as you say, bloody disagreements at the start of this, uh, this relationship. But it has evolved into, you know, such a close and strong alliance, um, you know, over, uh, over, recent, you know, over recent decades and, um, and centuries.